Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, dear colleagues, dear doctors. Thank you very much for joining in in my webinar. My name is Mikhail. I'm orthodontist from Russia. And first of all, I wanted to tell some words about myself, about my practice, and then we'll start discussing the main topic. In 2010, I graduated from the medical university, and then I started my first experience with digital dentistry. So I still have this photo in my phone that I found recently, uh, where I was sitting in my house with old scanner, Maestro 3D, its first generation, and old version of the software. So e evenings with a beer, I was trying to decipher the codes of digital dentistry. Then first intraoral scanner appeared in our clinic. And since that time, I started to master the world of digital dentistry because analog world was too boring for me. So, and how did we manage to make our workflow since that time? Thanks to computerization and orthodontics, we changed our approach to diagnostics. So for all our patients that comes to our clinic, to all adult patients starting from 14 years, when we plan to have orthodontic treatment of class 2 malocclusion, we perform the, uh, the, the planning in digital dentistry of the correction of the, this malocclusion. And when the patient comes with this kind of malocclusion, as you, see, as you see on the screen, for me to understand the best strategy of the treatment, I do the following. So, as you see, we perform CBCT for all patients, we do intraoral scanning, we do necessary uh, photos, and in the program we can have several options of the orthodontic treatment. What, for example, would be if we'll do uh, the, uh, orthognatic surgery? What result we would get, for example, in case of the orthosurgery, for example, the surgical expansion of the aperture, or if we do surgical assisted RPE, if we uh, advance lower if we fix the jaws with titanium plates, and what results we can get if we will perform the distillation of the upper teeth, and what result could be if we perform the treatment with extraction of premolars. And all these results, all these options, we could see and analyze before we touch the teeth of the patient. So, having different options in the virtual world, discussing them with the patient, showing them to the patient, and choosing the right strategy, and having nice uh, also force levels, we can get the result that we would be enjoying. You see the result of uh, after the treatment with extraction of premolars that we choose here. So for more than 10 years, for all patients of our clinic, we perform these diagnostics with a computer um, uh, modeling of the options of the result. So after we did some kind of virtual treatment planning, we are not a clinic that uses only aligners. We use a lot of braces. We also planned with the digital software, we use a, a transfer trays for the indirect bonding. You see, like we performed the transfer tray, this uh, analog of the Insignia system, so we can do everything in free shaped software. So uh, the bonding of braces takes only 10 or 15 times from in, in clinical practice, so everything is planned before with great precision. It's also one of the steps of the computerization of the practice. And also, w what is interesting, I'm very lucky to work in the clinic with a very intensive workflow. Our clinic is called Orthodontist, and the head of our clinic, we have uh, Orthodontist, he's a head doctor, he's in charge of all the decisions, and he's not working with his hands. All the work performed by assistants, by the staff, residents, young doctors. And during one working day, we could 
receive from 80 to 100 patients, as you see in this video. Uh, these are children, adults. You see a variety of patients. We perform computer mo uh, 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 modeling of the treatment plan, what kind of treatment they would like to get. So we do the, uh, the treatment, So and we perform the treatment using some technique. Because I was lucky to work in this intensive care, I could uh, get a lot of experience to work with braces and aligners that we're going to discuss today. And right now my, I finished my more than 500 patients, finished treatment of more than 500 patients. And most of the clinical cases, I will show you the variety of cases. You see some photos of my work. I pre perform uh, easy treatment, complex treatment. I treat complex pathology, easy malocclusion. It doesn't matter for me which kind of technique to use for treatment of my patients. And from 2011, from 2012, if be more precise, I pre produce all aligners myself. I was one of the first in my country that started to produce uh, uh, a whole set of aligners in, in the clinic. Uh, and I saw all the results that I'm showing to you, they were planned and uh, realized by myself in the clinic. And last year's, uh, there is big demand for my knowledge because the 3D printing becomes cheaper, so they become more affordable. The doctors want to produce aligners by themselves, so uh, periodically I perform some master classes in office courses in the clinic where I work. Also, I, I, I read lectures, I give lectures. For example, several week, weeks ago I was in St. Petersburg. Also, I'm often invited by private clinics, by private labs, for helping them to uh, start this process of the production of the aligners and to start working in digital orthodontics. For example, this is, for example, Los Angeles. It was three and a half years ago. I was helping to, uh, to present this system in Singapore and I'm actively doing these for the last couple of years. Also, I produce my own brand of aligners, which is called Easy Moves. I take part in many exhibitions and for many years I sell my aligners in Russia. Also, I do also uh, uh, virtual planning uh, for the doctors that don't want to take to do it them, themselves. So I perform setups and they produce uh, liners. You see beer on these slides is my second activity, my second business. I have the brewery that produce about 100 tons of beer in month, but we're not going to discuss it today. So it's great, great pleasure to uh, meet you and let's start our main lecture our main topic of our webinar. I divided it in eight parts. The first part would be ded dedicated to the limitations of clear liner treatments. What is a liner? A liner is a piece of plastic and it's obvious that uh, in today's technology when we could not uh, print aligners directly with the stiffness that we need when we have limitations in technological process. So neural network is not planning treatment for us yet. So aligners, they do have a lot of limitations. At the moments that they could not perform and, uh, and uh, is, uh, and preparing to this webinar, I read a lot of articles about limitations of use, using of clear liners that are in PubMed and the, the, the latest from 2019, 2012, 20, I decided to show you in this lecture. What I want to start with, when a liner uh, uh, is pressed on the model, so when the sheet that would be a liner in the future is pressed on the model, it's, it is stretching and becomes thinner during the stretching part. So the part of the uh, sheet that was touching the model in the beginning, it becomes more thick, uh, 
uh, thicker and uh, uh, and by stretching it the liner becomes thinner if we analyze how a liner is pressing on the teeth then we could see that the force from a liner is spread not evenly where it's more stiff there is more active zone usually this for incisors is an incisal edge for posterior teeth is the uh, upper part of the crown so it's one of the main limitations that uh, dictate the biomechanic of the liner also the article from the Korean Orthodontic Journal, where the team of researchers tried to perform the bodily movement of the teeth, and we see when we superimpose uh, results that uh, in 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 attempt to do bodily movement, the crown is moving, but the root is moving minimally, and the summary of this article is that crowns could be moved but not roots uh, by liners in the a desired position because a liner would produce a tooth movement by tipping. Another article of the changes in transversal plane. We know perfectly well that a liner works very good for the expansion, but how is the expansion uh, really achieved in reality? One of the biggest research is based on the uh, patients that were treated by Invisalign. And the main uh, summary that they made from this article that the precision, what I mean by precision is the uh, uh, difference from the virtual setup, clean check, and the real position of the teeth. So how did they move according to the clean check? And we see that expansion on maxillar is... Uh, precise in 73% according to the clean check uh, C, I see uh, on uh, lower jaw I see it's a little bit more uh, 87% and also the researchers took notice that clean check draws the bodily movement of the teeth during expansion but in reality we see expansion more by tipping of the crown so the crown tips uh, but the, the tooth is not moving bodily. So uh, the crown and the root are not moving at the same distance. So the crown moves more than the movement of the root. Another research of this topic about the e efficacy of the expansion with the liners, the fresh article from 2020. So in reality, the question is how much we could get expansion with the bodily, bodily movement and how much expansion from the tipping of the crown. We see that effectively, effectiveness of the uh, buccal movement of the first molar of the upper jaw is just only 36.35%. So we could also make conclusion that aligners move teeth by tipping of the crown but not by the bodily movement. Another interesting fresh article that I bought recently. In case of the pressure on the teeth, please take notice how uneven the teeth are colored by this color map. So the researchers, they were moving the teeth on the computer, then they were printed, uh, the printing aligners for the patient and they just analyzed how the aligners are working. Do they move teeth bodily or only by tipping? And only in specific uh, specialities and conditions, teeth were moving bodily. So they were trying to perform a retraction of the frontal teeth. Only when they added the intrusion and they did the certain uh, step, uh, uh, approximately 0 0.2 millimeters, the movement was close to bodily movement. In other scenarios, if, for example, we wouldn't add, add intrusion, the movement would be not bodily. It would be due to the tipping of the crown. And it's just a short summary from this article.
so we can take notice that upper central and lateral incisors they were receiving uh, the retraction force the crown was uh, tipping more palatally but the root was uh, inclining buccally another article about the predictability of the correction with the liners in short summary we could say that expansion of the maxillary arch could not be fully achieved the mandibular incisors tend to be positioned more vertical than it was predicted by Klinchak. rotation of the round teeth uh, are working not good may not be complete most of these uh, these uh, articles are based on Invisalign system. This is system number one. I respect this brand. They have the, the strongest team of researchers, very, very nice production. So that's why I think that the research that were made based on the Invisalign system, they are very uh, high level researchers because if it could perform researchers uh, using aligners of the by the small brand, I think that statistics would be not uh, a very uh, good uh, for for the system. And also here is something about the cases with extraction. <laughs> uh, I thought research only thirty patients were chosen and they compared how the retraction happens of the anterior teeth with the use of aligners in case of treatment with extraction of premolars and according to the uh, plan of the technicians that performed clean checks the buccal teeth were supposed to move measly but what happened in reality in reality we see on the a and d picture we see in case of treatment with the extraction of the first premolars The retraction were not achieved according to the distance that was planned uh, and and molars were measurely inclined measurely translated and in some intrusion that were not planned in the clean check so the incisors had less retraction that was planned and more inclination and extrusion that was predicted Another article here uh, of, on the liner 0, 4, 6 and 8, they performed the control scanning and they uh, compared control scans with clean check and we could take notice some difference on the liner number 6 it's 62% of correlation between the actual position of the teeth and at what was plant uh, uh, closer to the LN number eight is 78 percent what kind of conclusion we could make aligners they need some amount of over correction just to get what you plant on the setup uh, some more articles also very big and very interesting article and it was analyzed there prediction of the movements of the teeth with aligners so we see uh, uh, big restrictions in bodily movement in case of the expansion of the maxillary arch in case of correction of the rotations of the canines and premolars in the uh, also correction of the incisors of upper jaw and in correction of the overbite In another article, we see once again transversal movements were not fully expressed with the use of the aligners. Also, the correction of the rotations of the canines. Also, it's very complicated movement for the aligner. Then the plant rotation was 12 degrees, and also it was achieved only a thir uh, no, one third of the plant rotation. Also, the uh, summary and conclusion of this article was that the precision of the rotation of the premolars when it's 
uh, more than 15 degrees will be very low. Also, another conclusion that the main movement happens in, during the first week. Also, the reference on other researchers that made the same conclusion. And another article where also the authors analyzed the, uh, the, uh, so the intervals of the changing of the intervals are one, two, three till eight week time of the period of wearing aligners. So the conclusion was there is no difference between changing aligners once in a week, once in two weeks, or once in eight weeks. The same thing were told by Invisalign several years ago. So aligners could be changed by the patient once a week. Another systematic review, quite a, quite a big work, big article from Italy, that tells us that intrusion will be achieved only in 45, a maximum 70 percent, by 47, and also extrusion of the in, uh, upper incisors will be 80%, lower incisors 25% according to the 3D plan. The rotation of the can canines would be achieved only in uh, in 31% from the plant. Also another art article where they analyze the rotation of the 53 canines and only 35.8%. This is a mean accuracy of the rotation of the canines in Invisalign, the most technologically, intellectually uh, 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 best aligner system. So, uh, clear aligner treatment with the, uh, this method is not effective for the control of the rotations, especially of the round teeth. Especially, it's not effective for the achieving of extrusion. It's not very effective for the vertical control. Another interesting research. It tells us that the last years, not only orthodontists but also uh, general practitioners and some other dentists started to use aligners more often and orthodontists who utilize aligners their practice the efficacy of working with aligners is much higher than uh, of the doctors uh, who are not orthodontist and that's logical and i can prove it with my own experience so i'll try to work more with orthodontists than with dentists of other specializations so i wanted to point three main problem that could get to these uh, differences so we've seen uh, so, uh, some articles. In reality, there are much more articles about the real uh, 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 result of the working with the liners. What are the differences between the clean check and the actual result of the treatment? And I point three main reasons why these problems could occur. First problem could be connected with the production, manufacturing, also, the problem with the virtual planning, this is the main reason, I can tell you in advance. And also the clinical management, for example, not properly performed I I IPR, for example, uh, and, and not perfect timing for the IPR, and some other reasons that we can discuss today. Because I am producing aligners myself, I uh, visit a lot of lab laboratories, I test a lot of 3D printers, and I can tell you that the doctors uh, receive uh, worse results than the printer is not calibrated or uh, the printer is not uh, high, uh, gear is not very precise in printing. If we see macro photography of the models that were printed with a precision on the z-axis 100 microns, we see some distortions in geometry that could influence the quality of the orthodontic treatment. So I don't recommend to print with such a low resolution printer. Also with the example of my printer forum labs, I'm the 
client of Formlabs for many years. I have uh, several printers of Formlabs too. And mostly all the printers from the box, when you buy them from the dealer, they are not calibrated on axis X, Y and Z. So I, pref I did myself a calibration test. So I was measuring the distance between the objects that were printed. And I made some corrections in the printer, in the X uh, axis and Y axis for getting the best accuracy of the printing. So I recommend to my colleagues uh, to uh, also make sure that the calibration of the printer is made properly. You have to calibrate your uh, printer. So you can do some kind of templates, for example, to uh, and with SLA printer you have to uh, the calibration manually of axis X, Y, and Z to get the best results. Also, uh, most of the resins uh, they require ultraviolet. They do not require ultraviolet polymerization. When I work with gray resin. For example, from Formlabs, if I polymerize it with IV, UV light, the model, the, the arch would be uh, expanded in 50, 80 mic microns. It's a big distortion. So I recommend to use the, uh, the wash with isopropyl alcohol and not to polymerize the resin if they're not requiring it. You see the, uh, the Manu uh, f manufacture uh, uh, washing or uh, baths or you can do the bath by yourself for example with uh, some some bowls and the conclusion that ultraviolet polymerization for most of the resins is bad because it will deform its geometry and to make sure that your printer and scanner are working correctly you have to do the calibration test you can scan the printed model and then you can match it and superimpose it on the original STL file if the blue is superimposed ideally so your printing is working good if there is some kind of difference so you have to think about working on your production cycle also if we talk about the laboratory uh, part we have to talk about the plastic that we use I use indoor uh, sheets uh, from starting my year work with the liners. This video I took from their official site, uh, enduradental.com. This is a previous uh, uh, generation. This is polyurethane sheets. There are two types of sheets for liners, polyethylene and polyurethane. Polyethylene is utilized by most of the companies. It's very cheap. And it's affordable with polyurethane uh, works Invisalign and some other big brands, but it's not very popular material. But polyurethane get, have, has, has better physical properties. So this is a video recorded by me, new uh, generation of the sheets from Enduraflex, also bought on from their official site. If you try to, to do the same tricks with the sheets uh, of the polyethylene, you will quickly break the liner. So I think the most important component of the production of the liner is the acrylic itself. So I'm not taking compromises. Only for the simplest cases I will use polyethylene sheets. In most of other cases I work with polyurethane. It will critically influence the success of the orthodontic treatment, treatment with the liners. Also you can do uh, and uh, 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 find the physical properties of the indoor of their website. I have no interest, I have no financial interest in this company. I just like their product, their material, their products and I was using it all the time, never trying to be infidel to it. You see, uh, when we put it in the mustard, it gets uh, the best transparency for the longest time. You see, that has the ability to resist uh, uh, 
crack of, in continuous pressure, also uh, to the deformation. Also, what is important to know about the acrylic that we use, that it has to be trimmed properly. In 2012, there was a big research that was performed in the USA about the, uh, the best type of trim of the liner. And the conclusion was following that when we trim a liner two or three millimeters uh, higher of the, the, the gingival zenith, it gives us better retention uh, if we compare with the trimming just uh, uh, evenly on the gingival margin. So if you produce a liner yourself or you order it somewhere else, you have to use the option of the uh, higher trimming. It will be less visible, it, the patients would like it more, and it will be uh, giving better retention because a lack of retention sometimes is also the problem why the liners are not working properly in the mouth. In case of the sh short clinical crown, besides having high trimming, I also add retention attachments just to make sure that all the forces are the programmed in the liner because of the uh, virtual planning would be translated on the tooth very correctly extremely correctly and the, also the very important component is 3d planning it's very important not to plan unreal movements i have a big collection of the clean check setups made by some doctors and technicians where we see uh the uh unreal moment for uh, the liners. We already know some literature researchers that tells us that a liner has problems with a bodily moment, with a vertical moment. But uh, these technicians who produce setups, they didn't spend any day in the clinic, they haven't seen patients, they don't know what biomechanic is, they just draw a beautiful cartoon. And if the doctor is not very experienced, the doctor would validate this cartoon and then we would get the big discrepancy between the cartoon and the reality. That's why, why it's very important to, to plan your setup uh, as it's not just the beautiful animation that you see where the teeth are straightening uh, all at the same time, but you have to produce setups uh, Oh, with great knowledge. What does it mean? You have to divide it in layers, you have to use uh, the movements that are affordable in aligners. Here I draw that and layer one will create space in the uh, arch for the tooth. Read one. On the second layer will start to move the tooth lingually and other incisors will move buckily, so that's how we could get the tooth inside the arch and we can get even RP, RP or, uh, with all the teeth. So that uh, just shows us how the layers can help us to create uh, proper liners and I just needed 80 liners for finishing of this treatment and of course you have to perform over correction all the time. As we found out, a liners always are not working completely so they will not move the tooth to the position that is draw as a, that was drawn on the computer if you see on the picture above we see that laterally inside us they were more lingual and in the lower picture they see the final position of the teeth i will always place them a little bit buckily and center incisors i will move a little bit lingually but of course between upper and lower picture will be some intermediate layer when teeth first will go to the expansion they will incline buckily they will rotate uh, to some degree and then they'll do their movement back uh, red elements these are the negative attachment so-called negative attachments negative attachment these are indentations dimples in the liners these are their so-called maybe power ridges then we do in the model and and the aligner is pressed on the model so the aligner would get in these indentations and will get more pressure in the zones that we need to 
and always remember the limitations. For example, it's very important to remember that the center of rotation when we work with the liners, for example, of the incisors, is in the middle of the root. If If we look at the program, fortunately the connection is not very good. Where we do a 3D playing, it's called Maestro 3D. We see that here we have the possibility to remain the center of rotation in the middle of the crown, but it will be incorrect from the bike mechanics point of view and will uh, move inside this bodily, which is Im impossible. We could mo move the center of rotation in the root, and all the moments would be performed not by translation, but by inclination. I will demonstrate it to you. For example, when I do the virtual uh, planning, I'm not moving teeth by bodily movement. I, I will never perform it because it's impossible. It's not realistic. Bec uh, instead of that, I do the tipping of the crown by the uncontrolled tipping with the center of, rot uh, of rotation approximately in the middle of the root. If you plan like I, I do your setups by yourself so create your templates your templates your guidelines and with time when i gain some experience i manage to make my own protocols how many degrees or how many millimeters we could incline teeth which teeth what kind of attachments how we can perform over correction on what level so step by step i have to fill it in in the tables so your setup would not be just a beautiful animation, but would be uh, according to the real biomechanic of the treatment. And this uh, next part of the lecture would be the, about the preparation to the orthodontic correction with aligners. In general, I will show you a lot of complex cases, but the uh, my most of my patients are patients where I correct just the position of the anterior teeth. If we're talking about aligners. So the patient comes with the complaints about aesthetics and he wants to have good aesthetics. And maybe a patient can have a class two relationship uh, on canines, maybe has skeletal asymmetry. In most of the cases, in most of the cases that will not influence the health of the uh, of the uh, uh, teeth and jaws. And you know that some old philosophers tell that, that and uh, malocclusions uh, that is, has to be treated because it will affect the whole uh, jaws. So it's not completely correct. Don't think that the malocclusion is a disease. So maybe that's the proper occlusion. Uh, so that's how the nature placed the teeth in the jaws. So for the nature, this kind of position of the teeth is favorable. So in this position, they will be preserved for the longest time. So the teeth are placed compact in the alveolar bone. So I think the nature is the best doctor and it's smarter than most of the orthodontists of the world. So don't try to argue with the nature. If we're not changing the anatomy, if we're not performing the reconstructive surgery, when we, in, could, we can change the anatomy and do the new nature, uh, we have to adjust to the uh, jaws here, and we can do it with the liners without changing the position of the teeth. We just deal with the problem that the patient came with. The patient has class two some kind of asymmetry but here's one request one tooth is sticking out 
So, what is your opinion? Patient with class 2, could he live all his life with his own teeth and die with all his teeth in the mouth? I am convinced that uh, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship the patient has, class 1, class 2, class, class 3, if he's looking after his teeth and don't ha have real extreme skeletal problem where in reality the maxofacial complex is destroying. Uh, so in most of the cases, patients don't require uh, a major orthodontic correction. So we can uh, uh, leave canines and posterior teeth in its original position, but at the same time we can uh, provide for the patient the treatment that he came for, aligned teeth. So, these cases we would finish in 2-3 months. And I have a, a lot of finished cases just where we were not working with the posterior teeth. For example, patient has class 2 uh, relationship and his main complaint about is about position of the three teeth. Seven liners, the problem is solved. Patient has some kind of asymmetry, uh, the narrowing of the arches on the anterior teeth is the problem. Okay, we can deal with this problem. We can solve it. So, uh, uh, my opinion is you don't have to uh, try to over trouble. If we show the patient the uh, virtual setup where anterior teeth from this position would get into this position in four months, but his canines would be at the original position that he came with, his posterior teeth wouldn't change their position. So let the patient choose. I think in most of the cases, the patient would want to have this kind of correction, but not to be tre treated you know, in brackets completely and have canines in class one relationship. And it was like, you know, uh, 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 some kind of ideas 